If you find yourself in a season of suffering and you need encouragement, then my next conversation is for you. Philip Yancey is a best-selling author who has more than 17 million books in print in over 50 languages and joins us now to talk about his life-changing new devotional, Undone, a modern rendering of John Donne's devotions. Welcome back to 100 Huntley Street, Philip. Thank you, Laura. Great to be here with you. It's our pleasure to have you. Philip, this new book, Undone, it's so powerful. And as I read through it, it's something that you, it's hard to actually break down into day by day readings, although it's a 30 day devotional because the story is compelling. And it's based on a 400 year old manuscript written by a scholar and poet named John Dunn. But for our viewers who don't know who John Dunn was, can you tell us a bit about his life? Sure. He was a bit of a Job character, actually. <laughs> he just, uh, he was on the wrong side of politics, the wrong side of religion for much of his life. And he, he started out writing pretty randy poetry, actually. And then he, he finally kind of came together, uh, went to seminary, became a pastor, and was appointed dean of the largest church in England, St. Paul's Cathedral. I'm sure many of your viewers have seen that. And this was plague time pandemic time, and it was much worse than what we've lived through with COVID-19. This was the Black Death. About a third of London died. A third of London fled into the countryside to find some fresh air, and only a third was left. They flocked to hear John Donne to bring comfort and some sort of, some sort of uh, meaning to what the city was going through. And in the middle of all that, here's a man who actually was the pastor of people in great need, and then he fell ill, and everybody assumed it was the bubonic plague, the Black Death. And so he's lying in bed. He's not even allowed to consult his Bible or great books, his library. And out of that, he wrote, 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 in a feverish state, this book that became a classic. Mm. I know that many of your uh, viewers, I'm sure in Canada, even here in the United States, we studied John Donne in high school. So phrases like no man is an island and for whom the bell tolls, they all come from this great work of literature that has never been out of print for 400 years. And, you know, it's interesting as I read it, the themes, right? These are these are universal human themes found in this book connected to finding meaning in suffering. Or as, as, as you said, why am I suffering? Why is this happening to me? Um, you know, what what amazes me is something that you point out in the book that especially in modern society, we're in this time where we're treating the ability to be healthy and live you know, as long as we can, almost like a religion. And so we're running from pain and suffering, and uh, which we understand, but at the same time, sometimes we do just have to journey through it. Tell us a little bit more about that tension. Well, to me, the tension goes like this. The plot of the Bible is that we live in a good world that has been spoiled. The theologians would use the word fallen world. So we live in a good world, but it's not the way it should be. It's not the way God had in mind. It is not the way it's going to be. God is going to redeem that world. So you've got the good parts of the world, but the bad parts of the world and the promise of hope in putting them together. And I think if if we really, if you take out any one of those, if you try to pretend the world is bad, if without that goodness, you miss the beauty, the fearfully and wonderfully made human body that God gave us. On the other hand, if you try to pretend that everything are, are great, everything is great, a virus comes along and it just pulls the rug out from under your feet. So here's this great theologian, the pastor, the largest church in England, who wrestles with these questions that we all have and does it in a way that brings meaning and, and comfort. Uh, how, how how did it serve John Donne? Well, 400 years later, we still have his his match, his his dialogue with God, as it were, and and God did redeem the pain that he was going through, as difficult as it was for him at the time. Yes, and and you know, you mentioned wrestling with God. Something about John Donne's journey is that you know when we're reading his writings, um, and there, you know, you've got twenty six of them within the thirty devotionals because you add the last four yourself. But we read his writings and we see his journey from onset of illness to diagnosis to treatment to symptoms. That entire journey that every patient who is suffering goes on, and within that, his fears and. Then those moments where he's calling out faith and hope within himself. 
it's such a challenging journey for those who are on a journey of suffering and struggling with illness. What do you think John Donne's um, honesty has to offer those who are in that season of their life? Mm. Well, I've got an easy answer to that because right when I was in the middle of this book, I got a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. I had some kind of mysterious symptoms and I went to the doctors and finally found someone who identified what was going on. And here I am at home during the daytime working on John Donne and he became my companion, someone who had been before me, someone who was anticipating and then reflecting back on the very things I was going through, that fear of people talking about you when you're not in the room and, and the doctor is not really telling you the whole truth and and you're you're sitting in a lobby with people who have even worse movement disorders and, and thinking, is that me? Am I gonna be able to continue to write? Am I gonna be able to continue to walk? Things like that. It, it just, it eased things for me to realize John Donne, he struggled with each one of those fears. And at the end, he said, you know, I've got two choices. I could either fear every one of these little things, or I could fear God in kind of the, the awe, Old Testament way of fearing God. I'm just going to fear God. And if I fear God, I don't have to fear any of these other things. And, and insights like that that would never have occurred to me were, were hallmarks for me. I could, they're like a a cane I could hold on to as I'm walking down a new path. Well, yes, and Philip, you know, our team did catch wind of your diagnosis and we've been praying for you. And we know it's something that is a big challenge in this season and we'll continue to pray. Um, you know, it's, it's never easy in these kinds of journeys, but we know that we do encounter God in new ways sometimes when we're suffering. And I, I find that that's the case in my own life. Um, in this season where you are having these challenges, how are you encountering God in new ways? When things are going well, you, you kind of want to be independent and you want to just uh, take care of yourself and not rely on other people. When you do have some sort of affliction like Parkinson's or uh, cancer, those kind of things, you can't be that independent person. You have to rely on other people. And that's actually good training for us. Let's start by relying on God. Let's let's go every day and say, I, I can't handle this very well on my own. I need help just to get through this day, kind of one day at a time rule. And, and it's not easy for me to be a dependent person. Fortunately, I have a very strong wife who says, you know, I've got the big shoulders. Let me help. Uh, be vulnerable, be be honest. And the lovely thing about John Dunn's book is that he's so excruciatingly honest. Uh, nothing that that I've experienced yet is not already reflected in this in this book, this 400 year old book. You know, when you look back on your life, Philip, from a young age, you understood what suffering was. You lost your father to polio mm -hmm. just when you were, I think, one years old. Correct? Right. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And um, you may have noticed in the news just recently, the, the oldest person who lived in an iron lung just died. I think he was 78 years old. And here for all of his life, he had been living inside this metal tube. Well, my father was in one of those metal tubes. And I was thinking, what would my father's life have been like if he had just stayed in that tube? But people thought he would be healed. We need to be very careful in how we pray and what we what we think about pain and suffering because people who loved him thought he would be healed, so they removed him from the iron lung. And actually he died because of that. And I lived under that shadow. These were people who loved him, who wanted the best for him, but they took a prerogative that they really didn't have. Instead of trusting God, they decided what God would do for them and acted in, in a, a way that turned out not to be helpful at all. Yes, and, and Philip, I can't help but think that that has impacted and shaped a lot of your writings, not just with Undone, but previous books you've written where you're exploring questions like, why do bad things happen and where is God when it hurts and themes of suffering. Where do you, what, what would you say to our viewer right now who is in a season of suffering and they're saying, where is God right now when it's hurting so bad? Where is he? Mm -hmm. Well, I've learned that God is always on the side of the one who is suffering. And when a bad thing happens, 
often it's easy in to, just instinctively to think, uh, well, God's punishing me. And, and if you go through, especially the New Testament, just follow Jesus around. Never does he say, oh, you deserved it, or you just have to put up with it. He always responded with comfort and with healing. So God is always on the side of the sufferer. He doesn't he doesn't want us to suffer. He wants there to be healing, but we live on a planet that is broken. And part of God's answer to suffering is to have the body of Christ act as Jesus did when he was on earth, to bring that compassion, to bring that healing to people who don't have it. Indeed. And, you know, as I read Undone, I recognized that, you know, for both John Dunn and for you, a big place where our suffering becomes dealt with and at least maybe tolerable is when we look at the cross of Christ and we see how he suffered. Tell us more about that. Right. Yeah. It's, it would be one thing if, if God very distant and remotely said, well, those people down there, this is just something they have to put up with. But, but that God, the infinite God who created the universe, deliberately chose to come to earth to be one of those people. And, and the book of Hebrews says things like, Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. We don't have a high priest who do, doesn't know what it's like down here. He's one who has compassion because he's been here. He knows what it's like. And not only did he come to earth and have the kind of the normal human suffering that we do, but he went through this brutal death for us to let us know God is on the side of the one who suffers. And he's going to take the worst thing that could happen, the execution of God's own son, and turn it into the best thing, the, the salvation of the world, and then show us through the resurrection that hope that we have for the future. That's that's the Christian gospel in a nutshell, shell, to take the worst thing that could happen and turn it into the best thing. We call it Good Friday, not Bad Friday, Tragic Friday, because of what God can do. God can take junk <laughs> and recycle it into beauty. You know, the Bible also says that suffering produces character. And we know that Christ, you know, is with us in our suffering because of the life he led, lived. When we think about suffering producing character, I think about John Donne because there was a plot twist to his story. He didn't have the bubonic plague. And in fact, yeah. his right and his faith changed and his character changed as he came out of this illness. And for our viewers watching right now, can you tell us a bit about that plot? twist and the evolution of John Donne's faith? I, I certainly can. Uh, many of your viewers have heard the phrase, like, for whom the bell tolls. And in those days, if a person was on the verge of death, they would ring a bell. And if a person actually died, they would ring a different bell. And then there was a funeral bell when the funeral was going on. So here, John Donne was, was living within sound of of St. Paul's Cathedral, where he was the dean, and every day there were there were people dying, and the bells were ringing constantly. And we, he heard the bell one day and said, "Well, I wonder if that's for me. I wonder if it's the bell announcing that I'm about to die, and the doctors haven't really told me about that yet." And so he starts being a little paranoid about that, and then it becomes it becomes a switch because he realizes, "Here I've been." just sitting here feeling sorry for myself and not really helping anybody. And actually, it could be my neighbor. It could be someone in need. I could at least start praying for them. And he said, don't ask for who the bell tolls. The bell tolls for, for you. And it changes his, his outlook from, from being so self-absorbed, which is easy to be when you're going through difficult suffering times. And, and instead, turned out, how how can I be a minister? How can I be a relayer of God's comfort, somebody who spreads abroad God's comfort to others? You know, Philip, John Dunn ended up living many years past his illness, where he thought he was dying of the bubonic plague. He actually had something else. And then he went on uh, to recover and begin to preach the gospel even more through his work at St. Paul's Cathedral. And his view of death had changed in the process of that. Yes, and, and we moderns aren't very comfortable around death. You know, there are a lot of people who've never seen a person die. Well, in John Dunn's day, that didn't happen. Everybody saw somebody die. A third of London had, had just died. And 
he he invited people in. He was preparing for his death, and he invited his family in. Gave kind of a an Old Testament blessing to his children, and and his friends were surrounding him in his in his bed as he was preparing for death. They even came up with a like a death mask, which you can still see in St. Paul's Cathedral now. So he was he was ready. He had been through the fires. He had emerged on the other side, and he was ready. That fear was gone. He. He his body was old and frail, and he was ready to let go and trust whatever was next to the God he had come to know and love. And such a big part of that trust was what God has in store for us in heaven, in eternity, mm -hmm. united with God. Philip, we're so thankful for your time with us today, and we will be praying for you on your health journey. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was my pleasure, truly. And thank you for spreading abroad God's comfort to your listening audience. Our pleasure. If you find yourself in a season of suffering right now, whether that is uh, an illness or loss or uh, a time that is unprecedented that you couldn't have predicted in your life, I want you to know that God is with you in that suffering. There are times in my life where I have suffered physically and God has never been closer. I want to encourage you right now that God loves you, that he sees your suffering, he sees your pain, and he wants to step into it to bring you peace and comfort that passes all understanding. If you need prayer right now, please call our prayer partners at 1-866-273-4444. Please remember that you are so loved, that God loves you, he has a plan for your life, and he's with you in this very moment. And if you need encouragement on your journey, through your suffering, through those things that are happening in your life, I want to encourage you to get Philip Yancey's new book, Undone, a modern rendering of John Donne's devotions. These books are honest reflections of the journey of suffering and pain. They offer resolutions about who God is and who we are, and moments of prayer throughout every devotion that will encourage you daily on your walk.